Hello and welcome to Mason Storm DIY Audio. In this video we're going to look at finishing up the design for the powered bookshelf speakers and uh, getting our cut list ready. So here's our chart for what they're going to look like with the crossover we've designed. I've ordered the speakers and the um, crossover parts as well as the uh, plate amp so that'll be easy enough to get going so let's just model our box and uh, see what we want to do okay, here it is the neodymium 140 for five and a quarter inch so on the four ohm, four ohm version of it we will do vented and sure let's start with that okay that's way too big well we want to want a lot smaller because this is going to be for computer speakers so probably half a foot uh, would be kind of big but probably kind of a much more safe bet Probably going to tune it lower and uh, see how it sounds and then maybe try shortening the port afterwards to uh, determine the optimum size. And I think doing the 0.5 cubic feet should uh, should make it uh, big enough um, that we're not like uh, cramping the driver or anything. And then it's just a matter of getting our tuning frequency. On small uh, drivers too, it's... Uh, you know, this is usually where they're really lacking, so having a bit of a boost there from the enclosure can definitely help. Because um, when you're listening to music, this is more important than having it just kind of touch a little bit higher like that, like how it like originally started. Because then it's like, yeah, it goes low, but it doesn't sound like it's got any boom. Like no, no kick to the bass. So where were we? So let's do a 0.5 cubic feet box. Three quarter inch, of course. Well, that's five inches. Let's just say six inches for that, for the woofer, and then probably another three inches for the um, tweeter. And you probably want a couple extra inches, so. that really hmm. let's just look at another pair of speakers Let's see the specs here 9.8 15.4 10 15 13. That's uh, that's quite a bit bigger. Yeah, I don't know. That might be, that might not actually be that bad. Making it bigger like that. Still not convinced that this would sound the greatest. Cause I think it would kind of droop in there. Look at our driver properties with our FS. Uh, what the heck is this thing? Sixty. Interesting. Uh, 
see what the uh, Parts Express recommendation is. Seal day. I wonder how that would work. You know, if having the high uh, FS on the uh, driver, having the seal might be good to prevent over excursion. And I really do like the smooth transition of the uh, Could do it sealed and uh, see how it sounds. And then if it doesn't have enough umph on the low end, um, using a 0 0.78, well, 0.75-ish. Could uh, then add a port to it and uh, try that out. Yeah, because you really don't want to drive your drivers below their FS. Because um, the over excursion that, that wrecks drivers. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's say we're doing 0.75. Okay. So we're not, well, this gets us our kind of our size for getting our internal volume. Actually, I'm going to put that back there um, because when we subtract the driver size and the size of the uh, plate amp, because it takes up internal volume, it, that kind of affects things. So I'll have to kind of be aware of that. So anyway, the options here for the different layouts, we don't really want those. What we want is... Um, Let's draw a picture. Okay. Here's our speaker. Tweeter. Woofer. Obviously not the scale. So what we want is uh, we want to have like an inlaid in like center. So. As far as our boards go, so kind of two ways to do that. The wood will be cut straighter than this. So looking at it at the front, then we can we can have the uh, center kind of inlaid. And uh, as far as our board dimensions, we know that the the top here. Uh, 0.75 inches there, 0.75 inches there, so it's got to be an inch and a half shorter than um, than the actual uh, width or whatever. So we'll have to like manually calculate our sizes of our boards. So let's see here. Let's do um, let's do the sides first. It's probably the same as that, 9.5 by 15. Actually, no, it'd be 11 inches because it goes to full depth. So 11 inches, and I guess it goes to full height, so 15 by 11. And then for our top boards, they go... They go the width minus uh, 1.5, so 11.5, 10.5, yeah, 10.5, 10.5 by 11. And then our front faces, um, according to our picture, 
it's uh, smaller in every dimension. So 15 minus 14 or 1.5 and uh, 12 minus 1.5. There we go, got it all punched in there. Let's calculate it and see what we get. Looks easy enough. Um, I got another project on the go, and I'm going to see about uh, cutting it into the same board. So I'm probably going to punch those in here, and, and I'll make another video about that other secret project uh, another time. But uh, when I do the cutouts, I'll... Uh, well, in the video where I do all the cutting for the wood, I'll probably make a uh, get a picture of the actual cutout that I use. But anyway, this is all we need for now. Yeah, so the way this is going to work, we're going to have the center here because it's kind of small and everything. I can kind of set that back a quarter of an inch, and then I can get another piece of wood, um, a quarter inch sheet of plywood, cut it to the same size, and then kind of wrote out the center and then put fabric around it and then I got like a nice little speaker cover and uh, because it's kind of the same size as it um, the thickness of the fabric will be enough to kind of snug it in place if that's not enough then I can put screws in the side here and then uh, put magnets inside and that would that would hold it together as well but we got this kind of artistic idea of having a, a wood finish with like a Duratex outer perimeter and I, I think it's going to be a, a nifty project. Let's put it that way. So anyway, until next time, stay awesome.